Good afternoon, everyone. Um, instead of going into the studio to record this, I figured it would be easier for me to just pop on the phone and talk about a subject um, that's been brought up a few times in a few different conversations over the last few weeks. And hopefully it can give you some insight if you are this athlete or if you are a coach that is um, either new or doesn't have a lot of experience training these types of athletes. Just a little bit of insight from my experience. Again, I don't have a PhD in training. I just have a lot of experience and learned a lot from people who um, do have the PhDs and are incredible trainers. So I've gotten to beg, borrow, and steal from them. But specifically what we're gonna talk about is, is two different types of athletes or two different types of exposure to training and how we deal with them. And the first one we're gonna talk about is someone who does a lot of um, indoor cycling or spin classes. And that can range anywhere from the road ride classes to your cycle beat classes, like a soul cycle, a revved indoor cycling, a handlebar, a turnstile, any of those different types where um, a lot of leg strength and a lot of um, muscular stamina and cardiorespiratory endurance in the lower body is being built. Now, a frequent injury is when people start to go from doing a lot of spin to getting more into the functional movement or CrossFit world. I call it the CrossFit world because that's my experience, but a lot of people want to, um, if you've been squatting all of the time um, for long before CrossFit. So in whatever way you're going to start to introduce something, because I truly believe it is important for everyone to squat and squat with weight relative to your physiological and psychological tolerances. But that's the issue with a lot of times when you have someone new to training, but they've done a lot of spin classes, if they have lower body strength, that's it's pretty impressive. And a lot of times, depending on what they do, barring any kind of injury or, or lack of flexibility, they can put themselves into a pretty dang good squat position. They can move their body up and down a bunch of times. However, because of their exposure to capacity and lower body movements, only through spin, when you start to put a bar on their back, their squats may look really, really good. You know, if you have points performance of your squat, um, like us in CrossFit, you think, I want the weight in the heels, I want your knees tracking your toes, I want the depth below parallel, I want to maintain the neutral spine and the lumbar curve, and then I want the hips initiated going back and down for the proper line of action for the movement. You can see all of those things present, and then doing squats with a load on their back, but they're still at risk for injury because they don't actually have a capacity of all the other muscles to stabilize the spine while flexing and extending through the hip. And I had someone recently reach out being like, oh, I actually messed up my, my back doing back squats. And it's not that back squats are dangerous. In fact, they're absolutely necessary. And it's not that she may have been moving in a bad position either. Now, granted, I didn't see the squat, but it just could be because her legs have the strength, but her upper body doesn't have those stabilizing um, muscles developed. Um, that's what put us at risk for injury. So something that you can do in order to combat this is what we should all do in training is let's try not to do too much too soon, too quick. You know, everyone's at a race to fitness. And as, as we know, fitness is a, is a low trajectory to a distant horizon. And some, some really valuable stuff that I've gained through um, working with people like John Wellborn is, you know, you can do a five by five back squat and you can start with body weight. And you can add five pounds every two months. And at some point in time, one, you're going to be developing a little bit more of a capacity. It may not be as fast as you want. But while doing a lot of other things, you can gain, you can gain strength in those positions and, and really decrease the risk for injury. Now, as we know, as we increase the performance factors, as we start to train more and add more volume, we also increase the risk uh, for our orthopedic safety You know, with, with speed and with volume and with weight. So we want to try to balance that, but think for someone brand new, err on the side of caution. Get someone moving where at the end of the session, they want to say, I want a little bit more. <clears throat> That's something I've always been caught saying is, um, hey guys, you know, if I have a new client, I had a new person who trained with me for the first time yesterday. His name's Luis. Absolute stud. Comes in and I was like, Luis, I can always give you more reps at the end of this workout. And one of the movements was a dumbbell thruster. I had him like super lightweight. I think like eight pound dumbbells. He's capable of way more, but I don't know what his experiences are. 
Um, I can always give you more reps at the end of the workout. However, I cannot take away reps that you have already performed um, in case we just did too much too soon, too quickly. So that's something to be aware of. If someone has that lower body strength or capacity, but they don't have the stabilizing muscles in their trunk to be able to maintain a safe spine position, it can look good, but it can put them at an increased risk for injury. Now, the second athlete we're going to talk about, and this may be you or maybe someone you train, is the yogis. The people who are working the flexibility and gaining strength and body weight um, in all sorts of incredible positions. Um, it, it, they have a name for it, like the, 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 there's some sort of yogi squat position where you're just sitting at the bottom of a squat and your elbows are inside your knees and people can squat really low, depth below parallel, no pain, flexibility is there, it's fantastic. You can go through that a bunch of times um, depending on what type of yoga they're doing. Um, and it's great because they have flexibility. However, flexibility without stability is a major reason why we see injury in some of these athletes. Now, what I mean by that is that there could be someone who sits in the bottom of a squat and goes through squats that are at body weight and they have a capacity there. But now because they can get themselves into a position where your joints are fully flexed, which we know we want our joints to go through, through their full anatomical end ranges of motion. But if we only have capacity at body weight there or holding in static positions, if we start to add weight or add speed. Now we have flexibility without stability, and that could be potentially problematic. Whereas sometimes you have someone that's incredibly inflexible, and it's like just getting them to squat below parallel is hard enough because everything, their hamstrings, the rest of their body is screaming at them, being like, we're not going to go down this low. You actually have less to worry about from that type of athlete about loading on weight. Granted, it's not recklessly than you do with that person who can get themselves into the position, but they don't necessarily have the strength to stabilize um, while they're in those, uh, those, those very, very flexible positions. So it's just some things to think about um, for trainers out there. And I know, I, hey, I've, I've learned this because I've made the mistakes before. It's not me coming at anyone being like, you gotta do it this way. But I always say err on the side of caution. Um, fitness is a low trajectory to a distant horizon. You know, sometimes when you try to sprint to fitness, um, one, you're never going to get there. There is no state of, all right, I'm fit enough. Uh, you, know, you always want to continue moving and continue going through and gaining as much capacity as possible so that we can hang on to that capacity for as long as we live. You know, I'm not saying at, at 90 years old, you're still going to be getting fitter. But heck, my, um, you know, I just worked with I just worked with another athlete that I've worked with and trained and, and he's one of my best friends and he snatched, he squat snatched 145 pounds at age 61, I think he's 61 and that's pretty awesome. Anyone else could probably raise their hand and be like, I'd like my mom and dad or my grandparents to be able to do that. It's like, sure, me too. Um, it's not the most he's ever been able to snatch in his life. In fact, I remember working with him like seven or so years ago, we were actually working on a split snatch and something similar and he was getting more closer to the 185 or 175 range of it. And, and that's incredible. But my friend Bubba, he's not gonna get fit or he's not gonna snatch 225. And, and maybe he was capable of that at one point in time in his life, but it ain't gonna happen for him anymore. However, do you think I'm worried about Bubba standing up and sitting down from his couch? Outside of other factors that he's this, the smartest guy I know and sometimes has trouble tying his shoes. No, he, he has a physical capacity that's going to lend itself well to everything that we're doing in life. And, you know, he's, he, he's incredibly fit, but that's the, the key piece is that we want to get ourselves as much fitness as possible and not sprint there so that we don't want to have any of this and any of this. You know, we want to have that gradual curve. And then as we get to that point, we have that plateau and then hang on to as much capacity as we can. Now, I told myself I was going to keep this video under 10 minutes. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns on this, feel free to reach out. We'll respond in the comments. I hope you found this useful. This is stuff that I've, um, you know, experienced by working with athlete, athletes that have gotten injured and had to take a step back and be like, why is this happening? Um, so appreciate you guys listening in, guys and girls. Uh, and we will see you soon for another podcast and the Be Fit podcast. All right. Cheers.